I thank God for giving me the opportunity to have erected such a gigantic church. I surpassed you, the Prophet Solomon. This was how the Emperor Justinian exulted under the magnificent dome of the Hagia Sophia early in the morning on December 27, 537. He had all the reason to take pride in this immense accomplishment. The construction of the largest cathedral, the House of the Sacred Wisdom, the Hagia Sophia was finally finished. The Hagia Sophia is an historical landmark. It is part of what makes Istanbul what it is, an artful architectural demonstration of the golden era of Byzantine civilization. A masterpiece, semi-pagan, semi-Christian. Its physical structure reflects the last phase of the Roman architectural tradition, whereas spiritually and aesthetically, the Hagia Sophia is the fantastic beginning of the Orthodox Christianity. It begins as a mere design. The architectural innovative spirit of Isodorus of Miletos and the mathematical genius of Artemios of Trales merge in the making of the huge basilica. The sunlight filtered through the dome of the cupola washes the gleaming altar all day long. Mysterious whispers fill the air of this mystical space. The porphyrite carafes from Pergamon are filled with Christ's blood or sacred water. And the Byzantine mosaic work paved with tessera adds the sacredness of icons to the magic of the Hagia Sophia. The great Constantine offers a model of the city, the Byzantium to Mother Mary, while Justinian has in his hands a model of the Hagia Sophia. Leon VI performs the ritual prostrations before the Son of God at the Emperor's gate. On the eastern wall, next to Christ's, the portraits of Constantine and his wife, Zoe, acquire a holiness. The Virgin Mary with the baby Christ in her arms has been in the south gallery of the Hagia Sophia for centuries now. The Emperor Johannes Komnenos and his wife, the Hungarian Princess Erene, have been in her sublime presence in awe. A depiction of the Deesis, portrayals of Judgment Day, the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Mother Mary and the baptizer Johannes Podromos are begging Christ for forgiveness for all humanity. But without warning, the Protector, Mother and the Savior Christ are abandoning the Hagia Sophia. Mehmet the Conqueror comes to the Megale Ecclesia on the morning of May the 26th, 1453. And the greatest church of Byzantine, the Hagia Sophia, in all her splendor turns into the most graceful mosque of the Ottomans. The Muslim Hagia Sophia and the Christian Hagia Sophia are united into one structure. Rumors are diverse and myths are similar from then on. The architect is said to have disappeared into thin air during the construction. The rumor is that he goes to Rome to construct the dome of San Pietro and comes back after the foundations are erected and goes on from where he leaves off in the construction of Hagia Sophia. Mm -hmm. 
Nobody knows who opened up a hole in the crying marble. Yet both the Muslims and Christians believe that there is a protecting angel hiding in it. The Byzantine emperors are crowned there. The Catholic Dodge who invades the city, Enrico Dondolo, states in his will that he wants to be buried there. In its 1,500-year history, so much has happened around the Holy Hagia Sophia. Earthquakes, fires, revolts, Latin invasions, Arabic siege, and the Ottoman reign. 1935 is a turning point. A new page is turned when the Hagia Sophia is turned into a museum to take its place with its artistic presence in a universal heritage. It is in accordance with Ataturk's order, owing to the importance he attaches to art and his modern perspective that the mosque becomes a museum. From now on, it will be protected as it is to pass its historical heritage into the third millennium. For it is a gift from the world city Istanbul to the world. It is the splendid, exotic, and mysterious Ayasofya.